Hi Ruchita, how are you doing today? Welcome back to Learn to Visualize. How are you doing today? Thank you, ma'am. I'm fine. All right. So uh, last week we did a lot of uh, you know dashboard and the actions, and this week what I want to focus on very important concept is working with multiple tables in our Tableau software. So. Uh, do you know why we have so many, like, why do we, in a database, why can't we just have one table or one database? Why do we have so many databases? Why do we have so many databases that we need to first, then why, like, why am I even having this uh, session where we are talking about working with multiple databases? Why? Because, see, we have with the growing amount of data that is there, the growing amount of uh, the ways of storing the data. First problem is that we have databases in a lot of formats, right? Okay. Second, we try to avoid putting all our information in one single database. Why? Because there's a problem of data redundancy, mm -hmm. right? There can be security breaches that can be there because let's say in a larger organization, if I put all the data in one place, I may be authorized to look at certain data based on my work in the company and the other team member may be authorized to look at another data. So if I don't segregate these databases, all of us have all the information that we can look at. Right. So for example, the sales team is looking at the sales data, the product team is looking at the product data, the customer team is only looking at the customer data and they don't look at each other's data. So that's why they are multiple tables that we have. Now, when we want to analyze a business, I can't do a solo analysis on, let's say, customer and keeping the products on the side or do it based on, um, let's say, only the order uh, table I'm analyzing without understanding what's going on with the customer side. So all of them kind of are linked together in a business. Yeah. And if I want to make an effective recommendation or if I want to analyze my data properly, I need to get data information from one table to another table and, you know, make the entire analysis. So that's the reason we will need to understand how to work with multiple tables. And this is not just W. Anywhere else, any other software that you're using, this is one of the common and the most uh, important step of our working that we have to merge the tables. Now, when we talk about merging the tables, typically these terms will come into our understanding. One is joints and one is union. Depending on different softwares, like in Power BI, joints is called as merging and, and uh, union is called appending. Over here, we call join and union. When we do SQL, again, we refer to these terms as join and union. So the first and foremost thing is, what is the difference between a join and what is the difference between a union? Okay. So join means, when we are joining means that I'm trying to get information from one table to another table. But this information is not, let's say table A, table B is there. I want to get some information of table B into table A for my purpose of analysis. So that's a join. But when I'm bringing information, what do I need between the two tables? I need to have what? Between, I need to have a common column. Exactly. Otherwise, how will I bring the information? So yeah. if I have table A, table B, and I want to bring information from one table to another table that is joined, but it is done based on column common column. One column is going to be column, uh, common column between both the tables. So there are instances that we might not have just one common column, but we may have multiple common columns together that will help us to create a join. Right. Okay. And what is a union? Union means appending the data on one on top of the other. Right. Example, I have the report of January. 
I have report of Feb, I have report of March, all in three distinct Excel workbooks or three distinct databases. Now, if someone asks me, can you tell me the quarterly analysis? To do the quarterly analysis, I'm not doing individual month analysis. What I need to do is I need to create a union of all the three months, get all the data of the three months together and then do my analysis. Yeah. So that is union. So in union, if you think about it, all the columns columns are same. Whatever columns are there in table one are going to be the, ta uh, the columns in table two. And all I'm doing is appending them on top of each other. So that's the difference between join and union. Now let's see through an example how we would uh, execute a join and union in our working. So for this purpose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these uh, these files. So let's say I have these three, these four things. These are sales data. So if I open that. So I've got the sales information in row ID, uh, column ID, but the sales information is only for 2011, right? Yeah. I have similar files where I have the sales of year 2012, 2013, 2014. Now, when I want to do an overall analysis of all the four years, then what should I do? Should I do a union or should I do a join? Union. I'll do a union, uh, right? Union. Why? Because all the columns are common in all the four tables. And all I want to do is combine it right now. So how do we perform this union? All right. So like we decided that since all the sheets are having the same columns, 11, 12, 13, 14, we are going to combine them using the concept of union. Now you will notice that I've kept all these files in one single folder so that even Tableau recognize that this is a group of files and I'm able to pick them up easily. So when I go to Tableau, these are the CSV files. So I'm going to pick the text file, select one, click okay. And what it has done, it has picked all the CSV file of 11, 12, 13, 14. So now to create a union, the process is very simple. We are just going to click on new union. And over here, we just going to expand in the parent folder we can do, or if I don't put anything, right? If I don't put anything automatically, it does all the union of all the files. So, uh, okay. I think it created a relationship with my union. So I don't want this. I'm going to remove this part. And if I look at a uh, new union, once again, and what I want, I want all these files to come, right? So in okay. order to include all, like it shows over here, we are going to leave this blank. If I wanted specific files to be picked, then I can give my wildcard characters also to match it up. But since I want all of them, I leave it blank and uh, I'm going to click okay. Right, let's just quickly check whether the data got picked up properly. So I've got 11,000 rows of data. And if you see, it is 2011. And if I uh, sort it, I'm also getting 2014 data. So all my uh, data got put together over here in form of union. Okay, all right, so like we saw, that the union has been done. We have order dates from 2011 and all the way to 2014. Okay. Now, what was the benefit? The benefit of this is that if I want to do any kind of analysis based on over a period of time, how it is to happen, that I can do easily. So all I need to do is drop my order date. When I drop my order date, I get all 2011, 12, 13. Let's say if I want to understand profits, then I can easily plot the profits over here. So this is the concept of union. Now, another thing is we want to create joints. So let's just go back to this data once again. And you will see that I also have something called uh, the overall returned orders in 2011 and 14. So this is one single file, which has what it has all the details of the order. It's got the order ID 
and that these return these orders were returned so i have a lot of orders in this so if i just simply you know drop the order id and i do a like a distinct count on it right i can go over here and change the measure and make it a distinct count i can see there are about uh, 5436 unique orders now if i go back to this sheet and i see how many are there these are about 296 orders that i have so yeah. this is out of 5400 296 orders were returned to me yeah. but if i pose the questions to this data like okay from which country i'm getting maximum returns or on which product i'm getting the returns or on which you know months of the years the heaviest returns are there that i cannot why because this is one source of data this is an additional different table and that is a different table that i have so if i want to create a join between these two tables between the return table and between the sales table then how do i do that and how what how does it help me to get a better analysis all right so let's say i am going to add another connection over here So over here, I'm going to select the overall return table of 2011 and 14. Click on open. Yeah. And once I've done this, now you see I've got two files with me. One is the union file of all the sales and the second file is of the return data. So now in return data, I've got this returns sheet, which is there and I want to create join. Now Tableau has made it extremely easy for the non-technical people also to use this particular uh, feature. And what they have done is they have converted joints into a concept called relationships, where you don't have to tell, because when you talk about joints, there are different type of joints that we have to do depending on what output we want from the table. But now what they have done, they made it relationships. And all you have to do is help Tableau to understand how are the two tables related. Like we spoke about, there has to be a common column. And based on that, it can itself internally it decides with join to create to get the visualization that we desire. So how do we create a relationship that is in turn, it is a type of a joining that we are doing. All I have to do is bring this table over here. When you see this orange noodle kind of thing coming up and you leave it, now you will see it's, it's going to create a connection. And this orange line depicts that the join has been created. And when the join gets created, it is showing me that in the union, it's picking order ID and it returns, it's again picking order ID. So these two are the common fields based on which it is creating a join. Okay. And in relationship, a little different thing than what happens in joins is in join, typically we are saying physically we are bringing a column to our new column. But if yeah. you look at union, so when I click on union, if you look at union, this is exactly the same thing that we have. Do you see any column called returns over here? Nothing is there, right? So that data didn't really come in this place. And if I click on returns, I only have data of order ID and returns. I don't have anything else. Okay. So I, it's not that I'm bringing data from one place and populating the other table. And which is a good thing. The reason is it does not make my data source very heavy. And uh, all, you know, all the things that we want so that the easy processing is there is still there. But now let's see how can we use it for analysis. Now, when we go to a sheet for making a visualization, if I go to the very top, you will see that we have two tables. One is of returns mm -hmm. and one is of union. So returns table and union table, we had created a join on it. Now, when we go to returns table, what do we have? Return ID and we have returned. That's a yes and no kind of a thing. And in union, we have the rest of the things. So now if I wanted to find out that uh, which country had the maximum returns. Okay. All I need to do is yeah. click on the country. I've got the countries. I'm just going to for, you know, for the purpose of easy understanding, converting into a table right now. And if I simply put returns count, how many times returns is there, I am able to find it out. 
And now if I have to map it, I can map it. We can see the highest return in all three, four years combined is of China. And again, if I wanted to do analysis over okay. here of each year, we can apply filters of the years and see year-wise what has been the return. So by doing a very simple uh, concept of relationship that is just, you know, dropping the two tables together, we were able to get the information from the other table for our easy analysis. And it's not that you can only have, like we have multiple tables that we use for our union, we can have multiple relationships also over here. So if I wanted to create a relationship of managers, I have one more table with me, which is called managers, which gives me information of which region is taken care by which manager. Again, I can add, it's a Excel file and I can pick up this table. Right, so people has come and I can again make it work with the sales table. So you will see that we are able to create, and in this case, regions are the two common things. So you are able to see that we are able to create relationship with more than two tables over here. Clear? Yeah. Do you have any questions? I mean, how many tables can we join? Uh, I think about 42 tables can be joined together in Tableau. That's quite a bit. Okay, so this is a simple, in this particular exercise, what we did, we created union and we created joints after creating a union of the tables. And now we can do a full analysis in terms of managers, in terms of returns, in terms of sales, in terms of product, in terms of customer, everything. So now this is a good database that we have created for us. Yeah. Okay, so I hope through the session, we were able to understand that, oh, yes, in our line of work, we are going to face challenges where our information is going to be in di different databases. In fact, different type of databases. Yeah. Like in sales, we had in a text format, but people in returns, we had an Excel format. So we are able to combine all the data through the joins and the unions or joints now called relationships in W. So through that relationships and union and get the desired analysis for us. All right. So I hope you have, uh, you know, you're going to start implementing all these things in your work. All right. Thank you, Ruchita. And uh, take you. care then. Thank you.